Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello dear learners, welcome to this online course on legal language, legal including general English. This is lecture number 2 and today we are going to study history of legal language. I am Dr. Divya Gupta, an assistant professor at GLA University and I would be telling you about or would definitely transform you to the present world to the past, from the present world to the past and that is that transition or that kind of transformation would certainly clear all your doubts that are related to the history of English legal language. When it comes to English legal language, basically the impact of British Isles, the impact of Latin and French influence, you can very deep, very easily like would be able to understand. Further, in this particular lecture, I would be describing about how Anglo-Saxons, how Norman conquest, how each and every part of uh, that, con that annexation played an important role in the development and evolution of legal English. Now, with this note, I am go going to tell you that what are the learning outcomes of this particular lecture. Yes, the learning outcomes of this particular lecture are you would be able to recognize the significance of legal language as a crucial element in legal systems. When it comes to the uh, significance, when it comes to importance of legal language, basically this is the most important part and all of us are I like along with that, you would be able to understand the relevance of studying history of legal language because everything the present situation is actually uh, is due to the impact or influence of the past on it. The situation, the position and the status. So, you need to know about the history and after this lecture yes of, of course you all will be able to understand about the history of English legal language. Explore the ancient foundations of legal language, you would be able to explore it. Yes, after this lecture, this is something very important. So, further you would be able to examine how that language evolved and how that evolution through middle ages went on. Because I have categorized this lecture into several categories where middle ages, old English, then Latin influence, uh, middle after that middle we got to know about the modern influence. So, there so and so forth I am going to tell you about each and everything according to the stages, according to their ages. Further you would be able to explore the renaissance in shaping legal language. Renaissance period that is revival of learning where navigations, where explorations were at high peak and at that time the intermingling of everything that is known as if I am going to tell you that is melting pot. Now in this condition what is that melting pot? The entire culture, traditions, books, references of all other countries they amalgamated together in that particular melting pot and that is the reason it shows the impact of on uh, all these things on the writing skills many times the reference books that we consider. So all these things play an important role. Further you would definitely learn and have insight into the challenges posed by linguistic changes and cultural shifts. Basically initially it was in English but uh, later on it came into uh, the regional languages also where people started utilizing those regal, leg, regional languages that is 22 regional languages in this particular uh, like you can say interaction and transcription. You would be able to uh, explore the efforts of uh, modernize, modernization and simplify the legal language. So this is these are few important I should say these are few very important factors that you are going to learn after going through this lecture. Yes, so you would be able to explore the efforts of modernize and simplify legal language in that condition you can definitely learn the pros and cons of our legal language. 
Yes, so next we are going to talk you, take you to that content section. So, what and how the whole sequence of events are going to be described and that event description is going to lead an important uh, impact on the whole scenario, how it evolved. So, we will start with the history of legal language first of all, history and from that history I would like to talk about the origin of legal English, medieval period, early modern period and modern period. So, these three sections that I have divided in order to explain you that how these legal languages are going to work out. Then we have patterns for changing in meaning. What are the like you will see that how these patterns of uh, the meanings also change with the passage of time right. We believe we think that uh, whatever words we are using they were like that only. But yes initially their meanings were different and now their meanings are changed. So transformation in meaning also have taken place with the passage of time. You would be able to learn yes the contents we have taken I have going to discuss French Latin Greek influence in that. And what is the French Latin and Greek influence even on the words also. Whatever the legal maxims that we are using nowadays they are from uh, legal they are from uh, Latin language and then we have French revolutions that French uh, impact on it, Germany words uh, were used. So, because of that impact basically we are trying to discuss, I am going to discuss everything. Then again history of legal English that is this is legal language and now history. Again I am going to take you about talk you about legal English which is absolutely different from normal language, from, from normal English language we use. Yeah? So, that is the difference between them, important characteristics of legal language and scope of legal language. So, this is the point where you would understand the intricacy of everything. So, let us begin with the lecture and we will definitely try to delve deep into or we can say on please be ready to come on a voyage with me to visualize everything that happened in the past. Okay? So, I am going to discuss this historical background of Britain when it happened like initially it was cells Britain who were actually like uh, moved towards this uh, Roman in 43 AD. Then Gales picked Scottish, then further Romans Latin language was influenced and then further they were attacked by Teutons, tribes, seas, robbers, they were known as angels, Saxon and you can say Normans. So, these Teutonic cells actually were, uh, they annexed this place that Germanic tribes and now I would like to explain you each and everything on this particular uh, slide where you would understand that how the whole thing began. Basically when it comes to the beginning part, it is almost in 55 BC. In 55 base, BC basically it was raided by, I am talking about British Isles. I am talking about British Isles. So, what happened like initially it was raided by Julius Caesar who was a great grandfather of, of Emperor Claudius. So, in 55 BC only like he tried to annex that place. Then AD 43, what happened in AD 43? In AD 43 basically the emperor, I should tell you what happened in AD 43? The Emperor Claudius, the Emperor Claudius who decided to, who decided to subjugate this land. So, initially it was British Isles, then what happened in 55 BC basically Julius Caesar who was the great grandfather of Emperor Claudius, they, he tried to like annex that place and then further in AD 43 Emperor Claudius did it. Further what happened in this condition, the whole scenario moved on and in AD 410, what happened in this? Romans withdrew, Romans withdrew, basically here these Romans along with the Emperor Claudius they tried to annex that place. So, in 410, till 410 they ruled, they annexed 
and then in 410 AD what happened like these Romans they withdrew and they left that place. Now, when they left that place, what happened? This, the, the tribes who were staying there, they were cells, C E L T S. Now, in this condition, what happened? These, these cells, or we can say the Britain, if I am going to take about talk about this, Britons were tribal and they were C E, I should write in capital letters so that it will be much proper for you to understand. So, what happened in this like Britons were tribal cells in that and they were so helpless in that condition when Romans withdrew. Now, in this condition when these Romans withdrew at that time the Germanic Teutonic tribes they actually annexed this place and when these tribes annexed this place you will find that these Teutonic tribes after Romans withdrawal you will say that angels Saxon and Jews, they these three actually they annexed this place and they were actually known as Teutonic tribes in I should say in AD 449 right and this gave birth to Old English. Now, this basically gave birth to Old English is that very clear? So, here our old English began in the year 449. Have you understood the whole scenario how this whole thing went on Norman conquest and then further Britain's like uh, when the Romans withdrew Britons like uh, who were the tribals like Celts they were helpless and then they further moved towards that when these Teutonic tribes they annexed this place and angels, Saxons and Jutes they attacked and they confiscated that place. Now, this gave rise to old English yes. So, this is the whole thing where you have to understand this whole aspect and therefore, now that England at that time England is actually known as the land of the angels, land of the angels. So, this is the reason where it was considered it was highlighted as this point yes. And you must actually know that England is the land of angels. Now, in this condition, England is the land of angels. Remember this aspect. And one, you can say the first, the first English manuscript, first English manuscript was written in Roman alphabets, in Roman alphabets. And that was printed, dated only from 7. 37 AD right and this is the how this is how actually the transformation took place. So, my dear learners you must know that how things changed and evolved with the passage of time and with that Roman conquerence with that Roman annexation the whole scenario changed and along with that when angels, Saxons and Jutes they attacked at that time also like the entire thing was influenced. So, here we will see that how things revolved, how things actually reformed with the passage of time and this is the how I would like to tell you one more thing where uh, I would say that British Isles, British Isles which is now called as, called as England, England was conquered by, was conquered by whom? conquered by come on tell me conquered by Roman emperors and in that Roman emperors I began with Julius Caesar and then with Emperor Claudius right and it stayed there for 100 and uh, like uh, some centuries and thereafter when they withdrew at that time cells were attacked by angels, Saxons and Jutes. So, conquered by Roman emperors. I think the, the, the concept is getting very much clear everyone. So, many words if I say nowadays that we are using they are most over moreover driven from that language only. For example, if I take about mile, mile now this word is driven from the Latin word m i l l e that means a thousand right that is Latin origin ok. Next, if I mean to say, if I talk about Chester, you might have heard about this word Chester. Chester, 
we are using these proper nouns nowadays manchester then doncaster sometimes lancaster now these words they have progenated from the latin word c a s t r a that means army camp army camp so is that very much clear still we have so much of influence on our speaking on our writing skills because i have given you an example from mile it is m i l l e that means a thousand in latin whereas like is chester if i say chester manchester lancaster then these me these words have come up from the root word that is castra that that castra that is means that you mean by army camp so with this note i am going to take you to the next level of understanding and where you would learn that what were the basic transformation took place in these ages okay so let's start with that medieval period now medieval period is the first period that you have to understand the 500 to 1500 before that i have already explained you the entire thing that how it became uh, how that anglo saxon period like it went on so here you will learn that medieval period that is 500 to 1500 and in this basically old english period where legal documents were written in old english i told you that old english was basically brought by romans and at that time when angels saxons and jutes attacked at that time they started using that old english so in 1066 norman conquest introduction of norman french as the language of the legal elite because at that time only norman french was taken up as the language of legal elite the elite classes were speaking with this uh, in the same language in 1066 remember three major tribes i told you J jutes angels and saxons i have already explained all these thing in a very uh, like graphical manner so as to keep it in your brain not only in your copies everyone right so you must keep everything in your brain uh, imprinted on your brain maybe for the eternity yeah so please be very conscious please be very aware remain aware and alert every time when you attend any lecture so or orally they sang songs and developed english gradually it was the uh, like it was the combination of all these things they borrowed words they are also known as loan words i have given you the example and in the next slides also i am going to come up with certain uh, like the whole chart of those words which we have driven and nowadays also we are using them so and started speaking change the name of britain to the land of angels england that i have already explained earlier that the they changed the name of britain to the land of angels england right so this is all about a little bit of historical facts that are really very important when you go for all this uh, legal uh, like impact of uh, you can say this latin french and germanic influence on our language so further in 14th century what happened late 14th century the transition to middle english in do legal documents we could see the transition in middle english we could see that transition from medieval period to an old english to the middle english right so here we will move forward towards the next category where old english is described that is an ancient one right that is an ancient one in this condition what is the most important thing you should know that historical context if i talk about historical context you must know that old english also known as anglo saxon was the earliest form of the english language spoken in england i told you that england was changed as the land of angels from the 5th to the 11th century it developed after anglo saxon migration to england and was influenced by germanic language so it was actually influenced by germanic language in that condition so this is all about historical context of old english legal language in old english so what happened in that legal language what are the specifications of that particular language is that legal language is all in old english was relatively simple direct and reflecting the language of anglo saxons early english language text used often used native germanic terms to describe the legal concepts and institution so they use the native germanic terms in that condition to explain everything 
Now in this condition I would like to tell you few more important things when there is a Latin influence and Germanic influence that there were many words for example street and that street has been like nowadays we say street but that street has been taken up from the word strata. Strata that is a language that is a Latin word and in that condition I would like to tell you that strata word and in that this is a Latin, Latin word that means layered, layered or paved right. In the same manner if I say if I talk about the next word wall. Now this word has been taken up from the word vallum which means rampart, rampart and wall. So is it very much clear when it comes to that description you must know that Latin words are still there in our colloquial speech and I will be giving you several more examples so as to remember them by heart. So in this game same whole thing like what happened the Latin and French influence was began to flourish began to like uh, uh, to be visible in our communication in our transcriptions. Further what were the social political context at that time social, poli social political context means like that kind of influence on the society was also was visible and political influence like uh, Whigs, Tories etc were there. During this period England was a collection of separate kingdoms. There were separate kingdoms in that England part and the legal systems varied from one region to another. So legal systems were not uni unified, uniform I should say. They were not, the legal system was not uniform and that is the reason why even in India what happened. Like before independence I, uh, I told in the, I discussed it in a previous lecture also Warren Hastings actually, he brought about a change in and brought a universal or you can say uniform judicial system in India and that Warren Hastings, he, he was a precursor of the same thing. What now we are relishing like same rules, same law, legal conditions, legal systems in the entire country. So varied, it began with Warren Hastings then from one region to another. So the same kind of problem was there, legal systems changed from one place to another. So that was the society, that was the context over here. Legal practices were often tribal and local. So they were tribal and local, right? And written legal documentation was limited. And legal documentation because people were not actually interacting with each other a lot. And migrating from one place to another a lot and that was the reason it was so compact in the own periphery you can say. So legal documents were less point number one no legal uniformity was there in England different regions have different legal systems and systems were operated by at local level and tribal level okay. So these three points were very much important at that time. Further impact of legal language. Old English led the foundation for the development of legal language in England. That is true. Old English actually became the, uh, created the pedestal on which the whole system stood up. Further, I would like to explain you about Latin language and Latin influence. Now, I, uh, since from the beginning till now, I have been incorporating several examples of Latin language also. So, I would like to tell you about the historical context of this. Latin was the language of Roman Empire and legal influence dates back to Roman law which had profound impact on western legal system. Yes, we have a, even till now also like we are relishing this impact, we are undergoing this impact where we are using Latin expressions, where you, we are using Latin maxims, where we are using so many like suppose if I say inter alia among others. So we are still using such type of explanations, such type of examples, maxims and legal terminologies in our English as well, in Indian legal language also. So it cannot be like you cannot run away from this thing, legal language in Latin. Latin served as a lingua franca, lingua franca of legal scholars and Catholic church in medieval Europe. So what do you mean by lingua franca? Lingua franca means the language that is spoken worldwide or the colloquial speech. So this is what lingua franca of legal scholars are and, and even in Catholic church also it prevailed. Yes. 
So, legal documents, scholarly writings and religious texts were commonly written in Latin. Although like we later on people started translating those things and what happened in AD 600. In AD 600 some Latin derivatives, some Latin derivatives found its way into Old English. So, here you will see the amalgamation of Latin in Old English. So, we find several kind of like uh, the mixture of everything here and that makes the where in 18, say AD 600 it happened basically of Christianity, Christianity and Christian worship and Christian worship. I am going to turn up with certain other words also of Latin which were used in uh, which were like uh, a part of Christian uh, like monk sometimes, sometimes uh, uh, like we have priest. So many words that we are using now like they were uh, a part of Latin language and how they evolved I will tell you about the same thing. So, here in 80, AD 600 what happened? This thing some Latin derivatives were used like this. For example, if I am going to tell you a few more words like this, let us talk about if I use here Pope. We use Pope and uh, let me take the blank slide in that condition so that you would be able to understand it in a much uh, better manner. Yeah. So, here I would like to tell you that what were Latin derivatives. So, here after these Latin derivatives you must know that Pope is the word that is used that has come up from the word Papa and that is Papa's that is father. So, we use Pope right now and that is a Latin expression. Further we use bishop, even now also we use that and the word from Latin is episcopus, whereas in that spelling, special spelling that were there, episcopos, right. So, this is overseer, overseer. Next we have hymns, we talk about hymns, we talk about sermons. So, from where this word has come up? It has come up from that word hymnus that is hymnos, hymns. Okay? So, then we used to use school every now and then people go to school. So, from where this word has come up? School, school has come up from the word and the school word is S-C-O-L-A, scholar that is S-C-O-L-E, leisure. So, here my dear learners you have understood that all these Latin derivatives are really very important when it comes to school that has come from scholar. If I talk about pop, if I talk, ab talk about pope, pope comes from papa, then bishop, bishop came from episcopus, then we have more words like hymn that come from uh, the word hymnus. So, this is the point where you should understand that how these things have influenced our way of thinking and change of pattern. So, these are the change of pattern where you have to understand how this evolution took place. Yes, so now I would like to take you to the next slide where I was discussing the whole thing. So, these are Latin influences that I was discussing about here, Catholic church influence and that is the reason I mentioned those examples of Pope in the previous slide and uh, the example of uh, school, the example of monk, so, so and so forth, the example of hymns, etc. So, you must actually know about them in a very proper manner, yeah. So, that kind of uh, influence you can see. Now, we will move towards the, uh, yes, this is the whole table that I was ac uh, actually talking about, like street, we have strata, wall, volum. Vine, vinum, cook, caucus. Then we have kitchen, coconut, chalk, cos, cheese, caseus, pitch, picks, post, potis, pond, pondo, mint, moneta, inch, 
Yansia. So, I have already mentioned the Latin meaning also along with that in that table. So, you can just go through it, they are still been uh, in our regular usage, we are using them properly and regularly in this. So, do not be confused that if these words are have turned up in your uh, like uh, paper or somebody if somebody asks you about the Latin influence, yes these are the history, this is not only the uh, normal easy going way, but this is the history of English legal language. This is how we have been using all these things throughout these years. So, here we are going to discuss something more about the patterns for change in meaning. Here you have understood that why and how old English have paved way, slided into the Latin language, right? But now how this pattern of change takes place, metaphorical, semantical, sometimes like it talks about the open and closed categories. So, how this actually change took place? What is the pattern? Now, I would like to explain you the pattern of change in meaning. For example, if I say there is a social, there is a social, cultural, right? Social, cultural influence in influence and sometimes we can say phonetic law. Phonetic law, yes? And in that condition, we have morphological. I told you about that morphological change and semantic change, right? So, these things actually bring about a change in the system, clear? Then for example, if I am going to talk about platinum, if I talk about the word palatinum, palatium, it has come up from the word like the basic word is Palatine Hill, the basic word is Palatine Hill and that Palatine Hill has turned up into palace, okay. So, you must know the origin, you must know how this pattern changed from this place, okay. So, Palatine Hill moved towards Palat Palatium and then Palatium moved towards palace, clear. So, this is how the whole thing actually taken, uh, changed with the passage of time that is Palatine Hill. Palatine Hill. Is that clear? If I talk about the next word in an, and then talk about this word, if I say, I hope you know this thing very well, Caesar. So, what is the word that we are using for? Czar. Nowadays also we are using this word, Czar. That means, basically the means the meaning of that is autocratic ruler. So, from Caesar that word has come up, from Caesar the word that we are using Tsar, Tsar is still used in Russia and where the president or the topmost person autocratic ruler it actually refers to autocratic ruler, Tsar is currently in use. So, even the words they have transformed from that level to this level, remember. And in that condition, these are what morph morph morphological and semantical change, semantic change in this, right? Sometimes through specialization also we change. Sometimes through specialization we change. For example, if I am going to tell you fabula, if I to uh, going to tell you fabula, any kind of story, yes, any kind of story. So, what is the word, what is the word that we are using nowadays for fabula? Any idea, anyone? For fabula, we are using fable, F-A-B-L-E, fable. So, this is how the whole transformation actually takes place, my dear learners. Second word, if I am going to tell you is pulpit. Pulpitum is the original word from where the pulpit has come. Now, in this condition, you must know that special structure in the, in the, in the uh, church is known as pulpit, right? And this special structure in the church which is raised as pulpit initially was known as pulpitum. So, this is how the uh, through specialization also it changed into the meaning, the meaning changed through it. Now further if I am going to tell you something more about it like this is called simple platform whereas if I am going to tell you about the other one this is the specialized structure in church, specialized 
structure in church is that clear everyone so this is how you are going to learn all these things then we have other words that i told you metaphorical if i talk about metaphorical extension metaphorical extension now in this kind of extension you must know that if i am going to tell you radius for radius basically we spoke the initial meaning was spoke of wheel and now what we use radius for geometry right we use radius in geometry okay but it is more over like that only understood everyone so you must know that metaphorical meaning metaphor is a kind of a uh, poetic device where we use we compare two things by without using so as like considering one thing as other so radius is a word that was used as the spoke of wheel but now it has been used as the geometry as a, as the center figure of that circle that is called radius from here we calculate the diameter and we draw we uh, make the circle so actually the thing is that like metaphorical meaning also changes metaphorical extension also me changes the meaning now in this condition this is again a very important part then we can say sometimes we shall i yeah sometimes we try to change this by adding some meaning to it or by reducing some meaning to it right so by adding and by reducing the meaning you must know how to change it and in that condition by amelioration and by pejoration in that condition by amelioration and pejoration you would be able to understand how it goes right amelioration by extending the meaning by raising the level of understanding or maybe by raising the quality of that meaning idiot word is also in that same category i'll tell you how and uh, the other word is if i'm going to talk about let me tell you if i say minister if i talk about minister minister in latin means servant right lowly servant basically lowly servant or attendant okay attendant now nowadays minister is used for clergyman now it has been used for the word clergyman and you easily know that how it can be changed right so minister is used for clergyman and the person of high post so this is how the change has taken place by sometimes raising the standard of that word raising the meaning of that word to the higher level okay so what is the whole thing known as if i am going to write that is through patterns of change in meaning by amelioration and by pejoration let me talk let me make a cloud for this so that you would be able to understand it in a proper manner yeah so this is amelioration and pejoration now in this condition this is like raising the standard of it and decreasing the standard of it so have you understood how the pattern of changes the pattern uh, actually changes in me bring about a change in the meaning whether it be metaphorical extension or it be any kind of you can say morphological change semantic change sometimes specialization i have given you the entire examples like so many examples in order to make it more clear to my dear learners yeah so with this note we are going to move further to the next aspect where we will discuss about early modern period this is early modern period which is 1500 to 1800 that is 16th century and renaissance influence is uh, absolutely visible in this particular lecture in this particular time period and in this precision and clarity was focused on clarity and precision the concise work was actually paid attention towards because that avoids ambiguity okay that avoids ambiguity now in that condition you must know that in 16th century rise of legal humanism interest in human life aroused interest in human life aroused where people started thinking about humanity humanitarian attitude they they started thinking about the well being of others so rise of humanism and rise of inventions rise of curiosity inquisitiveness to know more and more about the world that brings about that element is in renaissance period where the first printing press also started and then further latin used alongside english 
17th century what happened statutes and legal documents increasingly written in English. What did you notice in the previous time there was a dearth of legal documents and even the, the, even the legal system was scattered that means at local level it was different at civil level it was different. So at tribal and local level they were managed in such a manner. But now with the passage of time when early modern period arrived at that time so like uh, yes the number of statutes and the number of legal documents increased. So can you see the difference can you see the changes in uh, that history yes of course. So increasingly written in English legal terms is standardized now after that 18th century what happened 1710 statute of NA now statute of NA come what is your mean by that this is a law. The new law basically what does it man, uh, mean by that this new law prescribed what does it prescribe a copyright term a copyright term term of 14 years 14 years with a provision for renewal of a short time like that means this statute of NA provided the consideration or provided the permission for all the people who are interested should take the copyright first of all to write and publish their work. So this is a statute of NA remember A double N E this is the first statute of copyright law when it started or began and that copyright law was activated for 14 years you have to take permission for this. So let me tell you more about it that is with a provision which kind of provision with a provision for renewal renewal of what renewal of publishing for the same term and getting the license license their work license their work could be I am writing in bold published and published by the author by the author. So basically this is the right given to these authors that now you can after this copyright law you can go and publish your art your work. So this is how like in 18th century transformation uh, started and in 18th century in, in 18th century I should say 1750 is what happened legal languages become more accessible move away from excessive use of Latin. So here because Latin language was many people were not able to understand Latin so a little bit of like you can say few words of Latins were removed from this category and now what happened in further we observed that in 19th century by the time 19th century arrived the abolition of Latin in the courts the abolition of Latin in the courts English became the language of legal proceedings. So now by 1833 entirely when it was completely dominant with Latin what happened at that time at that time automatically English like people started abolishing that Latin language and abolition of Latin language in 1833 and then further people started moving towards English English as their as uh, became the le uh, language of legal proceedings. So in 19th century legal English became more standardized and formalized legal dictionaries were published. So from in 19th century only now legal dictionaries started to be published getting uh, were getting published. Now in what what happened in 20th century basically in 20th century people realized that the dominance of English is still there and they started removing a uh, lot of use of these uh, like uh, Latin phrases and expressions. So in 1920 to 30s legal writing became more complex and formal because they have to pattern strict patterns were there strict format is there of writing each and everything and in 1940s and 50s plain English movement. So this was the time when when 1940s and 50s when in India basically if I talk about then during the time of independence Warren Hastings actually came before that he brought about a rule of uniform uh, legal system juristic system across the across the India across India and then further in 1947 when we got independence after that like in 1950 when constitution was made at that time it was decided that for 15 years we are going to deal in English but after that also 
it we will make a commission and uh, certainly some regional languages are added to it but hindi will certainly be made as devanagari hindi would be made as the official language for script writing so that was decided in 1950 okay so it has become like a movement of plain english came into being in that condition even in india and across the world also and in that condition you must know that 22 regional languages were added in the whole thing in uh, were added in the uh, for legal transcription for legal transaction and communication yes so what happened in 1970 and 80s rise of legal drafting courses so whatever like uh, now people started joining the courses of legal drafting continued focus on clarity in legal writing now in this condition people's in, like people started showing his inclination towards drafting side and in this condition you must know that when people started showing their inclination towards legal writing they joined several courses also in that condition so this is how the whole thing worked out so well and by the time 21st century arrived people became so much interested in doing the law cases the law uh, courses for example ba llb bcom llb integrated one pcs j upsc so many so and so forth so in 2000s continued simplifying legal language plain english remains the goal increasing use of technology in legal communication growth of legal english as a specialized field so now what happened basically i would like to tell you one more important thing that recently e filing is allowed to save the to save the time and money right and in that condition that e filing could be done in bilingual bilingual method that means that means i should say i should say english plus any regional language is that clear everyone so this is how technology has paved way has crawled into has seeped into or penetrated into legal english and there it had started showing its true colors so here the recent law minister has claimed that has has allowed that e filing could be done on any uh, from any computer device any kind of like uh, uh, device being a very techno savvy person yes obviously you can definitely learn that part and it could be done in two languages english english and any regional language so there is a choice for it anything like that so here this is the transformation which took place in 21st century now further uh like uh, our chief justice of india uh, mr chandra chour he gave uh, the permission to come up with the verdict not only in english but in several other regional languages also recently on 15th of august 2023 even our uh, prime minister mr narendra damodar das modi also appreciated his step towards it because he wanted to move away from the traditional ways you know so this is how the whole thing changed now here is the french latin and greek influence you can see pre christian phase i have already told you about these teutonics uh, these three tribes were there angels saxons and jutes and then further you know that how they led about a change in this now i have incorporated these words wine vinium camp castra mile mile then we have mint montana some commercial words were there some monosyllabic and disyllabic words were there then we have money pound pondo cultivation works for cabbage they used uh, nowadays we use cabbage that is collus p that is pisum then pepper pepper so in that condition this is pre christian era okay and then for the christian phase where 800 latin words loan words were borrowed they are known as loan words they are known as loan words or borrowed words you can say right so in different periods in the brittonic languages walsh cornish briton and 500 early latin loan words common to the west germanic languages were borrowed so this is how we created that kind of ambiance where we borrowed several things from others and this is how like these uh, 
while borrowing something good from other things. Right? Whatever you think good if in other, you try to imbibe that one. You try to learn from that, right? So in the same manner, even they also felt the same uh, like uh, positivity while borrowing something which were really very much relevant. Even now, like not only Latin, French, but in English, uh, like uh, in Hindi also, like we have several borrowed words from Sanskrit, from various other languages. So basically the point is like borrowing is nothing wrong with it. It's, it's cool in that condition because we have been taking something good from other uh, languages. In 597 AD, Roman missionary, missionary along with Ireland missionaries, they actually moved further in this condition. Now I would like to come up with French. Earlier I discussed about Latin, Latin influence and Latin words. Now it comes to French. Norman conquest, this Norman conquest actually French became the significant influence on English legal language after Norman conquest in 1066, right? So after Norman conquest in 1066, what happened? The influence of French became dominant. Influence of French, right? And this legal language in French, what happened following the conquest? Much of the English legal and administrative system was conducted in old Norman French. This is again an important one. So, English legal and old system was changed in that. Legal terms, court proceedings, official documents, incorporated French terminologies, the infusion of old and normal. Again, initially we saw the inclusion of Latin and we saw the inclusion of Lat Latin and old English. Now, we will see the inclusion of uh, this uh, old, the intermingling of, I should say, intermingling of old English and French together. Because new statutes were written, new regulations were written and we could see the influence of Norman conquest that leads to the French influence. Here we resulted that old English resulted in bilingual legal traditions who, where English terms often coexisted with French counterparts. Now what are they? Court, jury, evidence, they have French origins. I am going to come up with a table also of the same kind where you can understand the whole thing. So, bilingual, bilingual legal tradition, it went on, where on one hand French was there, on the other hand English, Old English was there. And after that, yes, before that, Old English and Latin was there. But it is almost a amalgamation of everything, you know, a melting pot. So, this is a bilingual legal tradition led to coexistence of English and French legal terminology in common law systems. So, although many French terms have been replaced by English equivalent, some still persist such as attorney, voir dire, plaintiff. So, whatever words are using, we are using nowadays, they are, the plaintiff is the very common term that we are using, right? Plaintiff is the very common term that we are using and remember that plaintiff is the word which is used for someone who is applying, who is the applicant, okay? And that has been a part of French language, influence of French, right? The word taken from French. Then we have voir dire, we have attorney, attorney is a lawyer. So, remember that bilingual legal tradition, it went on, it went on very easily. Further, I am going to discuss about socio-political context. In that social-political context, do you remember what happened in that uh, old English? At that time, that society, rules were made and law were made at tribal level and at local level. But now what happened with the passage of time when French influence was there, we will see the impact on English and society and governance as the Normans impose their feudal system, feudal system and legal norms on Anglo-Saxons, right? Because that, because these French actually, they applied all those norms and regulations on, on this system which was re prevalent by uh, the French people, okay, understood everyone? So, here this is the French influence and with this note, I am going to take you to this list of uh, the words where English, these are English words, these are Latin words and they are Greek word. Now, bishop, uh, we have discussed, I have already discussed them, monk, monancus, then minister, monastrium, monastrian, nun, nona, that is Latin and nun. Creed, credo, that means I believe in Latin. 
further i am going to take you to that english influence now what happened to that english influence common law foundation was made because people started thinking that english is the common word terminology that we are using so common law foundation is there english is the language of the common law system now and in that condition you must know that countries like united states i should say united states england canada and along with that australia they actually considered english as their official language and they started using them in their own speech in their own uh, official task official writings also and sometimes official sermons and notices also so with this like we say we thought or we found a development in legal vocabulary where there was a amalgamation of french latin german in english and that is the reason development of legal vocabulary and they are like evolving the needs of legal system so on the basis of that legal system both latin and french influence was there and compiled together along with that we have precision clarity adaptability we were ready to adapt everything in that condition we were ready to change it and expand as new legal concepts emergence and the number of latin latin loan words old english finally we ascertained only with the completion of the toronto based dictionary yes toronto based dictionary old english doe on the basis of a microfinch concordance old english compiled by compiled by helle agiopolo and beninsky are toronto so remember that this is the dictionary we are compile we are like coming up with that uh, part to learn more and more about that influence so this is the history of legal english till now we have understood that all courts judgments bills acts bylaws all the writing amendments were done in english language now so wills contracts i should say all these like things were done in english by the time uh, independence came up over here so old english norman french latin these things 1 2 3 and 4 remember so latin was the language of administration and was law in england well french was the court law have you understood this aspect this is really very important let you language of administration in england latin right and french became the la uh, language of court french court language latin latin was the language of language of administration and law is that very much clear everyone so this is the history of legal english and now we are going to see the important although we have done in previous lectures also what is the important characteristics of legal language we have seen the french and grammatical structure french influence on grammatical structure we have seen punctuation we have seen older words we have seen modifiers modifiers using adjectives using modifier with nouns and then we have used the word for example employer employee that is lesser lessy this is again an example of the word if i say reciprocal words right reciprocal words although in my previous lecture i have already explained about the characteristics of english language but just a revision of everything is very much required that punctuation plays an important role you must know about the older words older words for example hair of wear of and the parties hair to so we have we have been using these things as a characteristic features to identify the legal language scope of legal language yes two people are infected like two people are there a part of that particular thing one who is affected by the law and one who deals with the law that means legal experts law makers sometimes uh, you can say uh, the uh, people who are there plaintiff defendants so law experts are there law makers are there member of parliament are there then we have member of legislative assembly juries and judges advisers they all are two people are there one who is affected and one who is dealing with it okay so these these two categories actually come in the ambit of legal language so therefore in uniformity yes warren hastings was the person who brought about the uniformity in it and this is the scope of legal language so at the end i would like to tell you that my dear learners this history of legal language could not be segregated from the learning language part in the next lecture i would be dealing about english language uh, like about about language of communication in india basically like which kind of language legal language do we use in india 
So here, from here, we have actually created a framework. The pedestal on which our entire, like the next lecture will depend and the next understanding will depend, right? So this is the conclusion where I would say that fascinating evolution that mirrors, mirrors the development of societies and their legal system. Okay, so you must definitely know about the legal terminologies influence and rest of the thing to acquire the skills. Now in this condition, I would like, like to come up with the references that I have, the books that I have referred over here. This is again an important one, where introduction to English legal history, where did English come from, this is the site that I have referred, then for the origins of legal English I have gone through. Then development of terminology indicating the legal status of lowest class of population in the territory of Slovakia. Then uh, I have referred to the general on law economy and this thing. So these are few references that I have uh, taken or we can say the books that I have referred throughout this lecture. So my dear learners with this note I am Dr. Divya Gupta signing off for now. But remember that all these things that I have told you do not inscribe them in your copy. Try to paste them and just uh, leave the imprint on your brain. So listen them very carefully, attentively because listening skill is going to help you out. Active listening is going to help you out in each and every manner. Yeah. So thank you my dear upcoming lawyers I should say. Yeah. Thank you.